Let's be on our feet for the reading of the word of God. I'm speaking for the next 20 minutes and it will be a blessing to somebody's life. I love the word of God. How many people enjoy the word of God in this house? I love the word of God. The word of God is powerful. It moves you to another dimension. It changes your destiny. It causes you to enjoy the grace of God. You know, we're working on a series of caption. I want to be a powerful Christian. I'm a powerful Christian. How to be a powerful Christian? A powerful Christian, who they are, is reflected in their words. Someone say, my word. My word. Any disaster that can happen to a human being starts from a word. And any change, any miracle, any blessing that can happen to anybody at all will start from a word. In the next few moments, you're about to see how a word can transform you, can make you, or can unmake you. Tell somebody, my words are powerful. My words are powerful. Um, Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. Joshua chapter 6, verse number 26. Okay, give me NIV first, then we go by this one. Give me NIV first, then we go by this one. Amen. If I can get NIV first. At that time, Joshua pronounced the solemn oath. Cares before the Lord. Any man who tries to rebuild the city, Jericho, at the cost of the firstborn, the person firstborn will die. And when the person is about to complete the house, the lastborn will die. Talk to someone and say, my neighbor. My neighbor. Who has spoken? Who has spoken? You may be seated. Let me tell you something. One day, there is a man, his name is called Joshua. Give me a circle of the man is called Joshua. Now let's say this is Joshua. Stand it for me. You'll be blessed. You'll be, you'll be blessed because the first service people were blessed. And I'm believing God that any, everything I said in the first service I can say in the second service. But I know it was rich. God used him to defeat Jericho. This is Jericho. And after he, God used him to defeat Jericho, the Bible says he destroyed Jericho. So now he has destroyed. And after he destroyed Jericho, he opened his mouth, the year of now, and said, anybody, so come as this one, anybody who tries to rebuild the city back, when he, when he lays the foundation, he will lose his older son. When he is finishing the property, the young son will die. Church, this has been spoken some time ago. Then one day, a man, his name is called Heel. He got money. He came and said, "Ah, I've seen a city called Jericho. It's so ugly. I want to build it. But he didn't know that somebody has spoken that if you try to build it, your children will die. Some of you, the family you came out from, you have seen that things are not well. You want to help. You don't know what has been spoken. So truly and behold, First Kings 16, 34, and let's see what happened. Truly and behold, in Ahab's time, give me the NARV. In Ahab's time, here from Bethel, so a man that is called here, stand here. He has gotten money. He rebuilt that city, the town of Jericho. So now he has come to rebuild it. He's happy, money has come. But when he started to work on the city, his oldest son. His younger son, his younger son died in accordance to the word that Joshua has spoken. But this time around, Joshua was dead. Child of God, hear me. He came to do something good. But somebody has already put a curse that if you try to build, your children will die. Because he was trying to build, he had two funerals in the house. The last time you wanted to start your project, what happened to you? The last time you made your mind to marry, what happened? The last time you had an idea to start something great, what happened? It's not your fault. A Joshua has spoken. 
And today I want to ask you one question. Which Joshua has spoken? Jesus. And when Joshua spoke, till the time he came to build, the time difference was 200 years. It means a word can stay in the atmosphere for years. Because words carry energy. Child of God, I want to ask you one question. Who has spoken? What has been spoken? So imagine when the man had money and he started the foundation. God, I'm building a city. Boom! Ne a yaba. When he finished housewarming party, now Samosi, not knowing somebody says something before he was born. Powerful worship. I want to ask you one question. Before you were born, who spoke? Who spoke? That when somebody like you comes into the family, this is what is supposed to happen. But let me tell you, it's, it's never over. Because if this guy spoke, there will be another person that can also speak yes, sir. to reverse it. Yes, sir. And today I came as that one person. Yes, Lord. Oh, your amen is suffering from diabetes. Yes, May I become that one person? Yes, Lord. May you be the one person that will change it in the family. So fire. Fire. So right now, the city is built. But because the city is built, Joshua cares the city. So although the city was built, there was an issue. The Bible says, Shh, the water in the city was so bad that when you were a woman and you are pregnant, when you drink the water, you go to a miscarriage. When you were a farmer and you take water from the city, when you put it on your cro crops, the land was unproductive. The city of Jericho. Then one day, someone say one day. One day. Say one day. One day. Say one day. One day. A man by the name of Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19, N-I-N-L-T. And look at it now. One day, the leaders of the city went to visit Elisha. You are prophet Elisha. And they said to Elisha, we have a problem with our city. My Lord. And look at it now. The town is located in pleasant surroundings. As you can see, but the water is bad and the land unproductive. Look at it. The land is pleasant surroundings. The town is pleasant surroundings, but the water is bad. When people see you, you look beautiful, but the water is bad. My God. When people see you, you look nice, but the bank account is bad. My God. When they see your family, they see and pneumonium people, people of honor, but the water is bad. That's when right. they see where you work, it looks so nice, but you are not happy. When Jesus. they see you and your husband or wife holding your hands, they want to marry like you, but in the house. And My God. The town is situated in a pleasant surrounding, but the water is bad. Right. The water is the inner core. Pleasant surroundings, church. In the time your life is going through, pleasant surroundings with troubles, it means somebody has spoken. My God. And the sad thing about words is that when people speak, you are not there to hear. Church, when, when, when God is supposed to open your eye to know the number of people who cursed you last night in their bedroom, you will shock. The people that have gone naked them sat down and said they want to see you fail. The what the, the pleasant surroundings, but the water is bad. And look at the land. The land is unproductive. It doesn't produce. What haven't you tried before? But the resource is not there. It's not your fault. A Joshua has spoken. Elisha said, Elisha said, Elisha said, Elisha said, bring me a new bowl. Bring me a new bowl. No, stand there. You have a job to do here. Bring me a new bowl. Bring me a new bowl. 
bring me a new bow bring me a new bow ah, fast people have to be smart come on you know how I work bring me a new bow He took a new bow and he said, Bring me a new bow with a salt in it. It's okay. Psh. Then the Bible says, Psh. Sit down, everybody, sit down, sit down, sit down. Thank you. This is not the time. You have made mistakes. Bring me a new bow with salt in it. So they brought it to him, Eliza. They gave to Eliza. I'm come to show you something. They gave to Eliza. Bring in a new bowl with salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went to the spring. That supplied the town with water. And threw the salt in it. And he said, this is what the Lord says. I have purified this water. It will no longer cause death or infertility. Don't clap here. 22. And the water has remained pure ever since. Just as Elisha said. Shh, don't clap. This is the meaning. Joshua destroyed the water. Eliza came to change it. Whoever was a Joshua in your family, Jesus, you are the Elisha. My God, my God, my God. Yes, Lord. Jesus. I can I can feel, I yes, can feel. Lord. I said you are the Elisha. 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 The Bible says the water has remained pure. So if you check the whole scenario, it's two things. Somebody destroyed it somebody came to make it well but before somebody comes to make it somebody died out of it so it means if you don't solve the problem the problem can kill you yes sir but can i stand here to prophesy to somebody Professor. i said can i stand here to prophesy to somebody yes. Anything in your family Jesus. that has been a battle, a crisis Jesus. that wants to destroy your life, yes, Lord. you are the Elisha. Jesus. You are the Elisha. Jesus. You are the Elisha. Jesus. Shout, I am the Elisha. I am the Elisha. Sit down for one minute. The reason why it was Elisha who came to change the whole scenario was because Elisha received a double portion so because he had the double portion he had the power and the ability to stop what was going on and hear me Shh. the time elisha the time joshua cursed the city to the time here here came to build the time elapsed in between was 200 years child of God if an Elisha doesn't rise up more people will perish sister who are you waiting for my brother who are you waiting for because they told you in this family if you try so who is supposed to try but when you carry the double portion what is the double portion you are a powerful Christian. Somebody raises up in the family and want to, somebody came here and their family house was broken, was about to break, and they wanted to go and build it. Their business collapsed. 
One day, a woman came here. She was wearing black. Young lady. said, Why are you wearing black? She said, My husband is dead. I said, Ah, before you tell me why your husband died, let me tell you what happened. Do you remember? And I said to the woman, Maybe your husband has not told you. He tried to go and build a house for the father. He said, Papa, Papa, when he built the house for the father, the day they were doing the house for parties when he collapsed and died. And I told her that because the father's own sister said, Why has your child come to build a house in the village for you? To uh, show when you yam and yet in end this grace here. I don't know how to explain it. Why has your child built you a house to glorify you? And for us, dear, it to let us people know that our children didn't succeed. God. The guy, 38 years, died. Because somebody doesn't want things to happen. That's right. Church, in this contest, forget about Joshua being a man of God. Joshua can represent anybody. Yes, sir. I said Joshua can represent anybody. Yes, sir. Ah, can I stand here and pause? And I just felt something. Can I tell you? Jesus. If any man of God, my God, has stand somewhere to curse you, Jesus. Matoye ayaya. Yadole Abranta, Yale Abo Kayaya, Lie Apatatos, Yandili Abrandaya, Ladole Abadeya, Yakato, Bola Ayandeya Bayaya, Yadala Brandeya Kataya, Zile Abrantaya, Yadala Basadaya, Layadala Baya. I reverse, I reverse, I reverse, I reverse, I reverse. Yes, Lord. I reverse it. 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 Sit down for a minute. Men of God, let me tell you something. I'm a man of God, so let me tell you. Men of God, we have a tendency. We have the propensity. We have the proclivity. Sometimes to to use our office to manipulate others so a man of god small ten wants to curse you am i saying the truth that's right some men of god small ten you they want to curse i made a vow i said god what you have given to me i'll never use it to destroy people but i'll use it to destroy enemies uh, the devil the devil the devil but not a human being yes, because when a human being is fighting me it's not a human being it is the spirit behind yes, the Lord. human being yes, so i've got to you to fight the spirit so listen to me people can do me bad i don't talk i don't talk when i was young i was not smart enough at that time if you joke i guess you don't <laughs> and there are people that i said things to that up to date it has affected them he will tell you and one day i vowed that god give me a second chance so me said so you know me you can do listen somebody can insult me do me anything when they come i'll pray for them sometimes we can be driving on the roadside we see somebody papa pa, we about to touch say no no let the person come out pack a car the person will come i'll pray for the person say papa you are a good man because the gift is not to destroy lives the gift is to build lives Amen. men of god we are destroying lives and sometimes what people do they don't even know what they are doing no. when they are destroying you listen to me it is a listen one one lady one lady mute me We should do one other fresh service and the second service water salt i'll put it on my altar then on tuesday wednesday that's when we use it so get me the water in the bowl the new fresh bowl what elisha did the new fresh bowl get it for me right now and give me the salt thank you father elisha is not there father i represent elisha in this direction on tuesday wednesday everybody will take some you go and drop it in your house. More water, one more water. Father! Confirm. Let this represent your power, your grace, and your glory. Change every activity by the message of God. Father, I reverse every agenda in the name of Jesus. Let the altar speak. Put it on my altar. And listen to me. Something will change. 
Yeah. Stretch your hands on the altar. Whenever I declare you shout, I change it. Anything you came to meet in your family that you don't like. Change it. And all the things that even started after you were born. Change it. Number two. Changes. Number three, I four, I five, I six, I seven. I the blessing is always bigger than the curse. Let's now give to me Genesis chapter three, and God cares the ground. Genesis chapter three, the verse, and God cares the ground. I'm letting you know something. The blessing is always bigger than the curse. If any man of God, anybody tells you that when Adam sinned, God cursed Adam, it's a lie. Never. God never cursed man after man sinned. Help me very quick. God never cursed man when Adam sinned in Genesis chapter 3. I'm come to tell you the reason. Because the blessing is bigger than the curse. 317. God didn't curse man. When God look at Adam, listen, the things they taught at the Sunday school, the Sunday school teacher, they didn't know the Bible. So God, this, this is God, this is Adam. God has already blessed Adam. So if God cursed Adam, he has contradicted himself because I can't curse what I have blessed. So God look at Adam and say, Adam, I wanted to curse you. But Adam, curse is the ground. So, but they say, and God cursed Let's read it. To God, to Adam, he said, because you listened to the lady and ate from the tree, you must not eat. You must not eat from it. Curse is that. Wow. So God, curse is the ground because of you. So God didn't curse Adam. God cursed the wow. Lift up your hands. Because God knows that the blessing is bigger than the curse. Yeah. Lift up your hands. So if anybody tells you, God cares, Adam, tell them, my pastor said it was false. Now you're about to declare. This one, increase the frequency, increase the vibration. Let the energy, protons, and the particles, electrons, increase very well. When I say about you, shout, I am blessed. Church, by the I am blessed, you're saying, if there's any curse hanging on your family. Jesus. You are the Elijah. You are the Elijah. It's moving away right now. Yes. Number one. I am blessed. Number two. I am blessed. Number three. I am blessed. From the fourth one going, just, just be doing something on your head. That's right. The blessing is taking over the case. Number four. I am blessed. Number five. I am blessed. Number six. I am blessed. Number seven. I am blessed. Bless your holy name. Uh. 